Hi, and welcome to the Best My Test TOEFL Writing Video Series. In this video, you'll learn how to express cause and effect, or cause and result relationships, in your essay. You're going to learn how to use subordinating conjunctions, conjunctive adverbs, verbs and phrases. Sections of this video assume that you know what subordinating conjunctions and conjunctive adverbs are. If you don't, we highly recommend that you watch our grammar video lessons that cover subordinating conjunctions and conjunctive adverbs before continuing this lesson. You can find the link to that video in the description below. Now. Let's get started by first looking at an essay topic. With the increasing popularity of ebooks, will printed books become obsolete? If you analyze this essay topic, you'll find that there is a cause and a result relationship. Can you tell what the cause and the result is? Okay, so the cause is the increasing popularity of ebooks, while the result is that printed books will become obsolete. So, how can we link the cause? And the result together. The easiest way is to use because, because of, or since to introduce the cause. Because and since are subordinating conjunctions, whereas because of is a preposition. Here are a few examples. Because ebooks are increasingly popular, printed books will eventually become obsolete. Because of the increasing popularity of ebooks, printed books will eventually disappear. Since ebooks are increasingly popular, printed books will eventually no longer be in use. In addition to because of, there are other prepositions that can introduce the cause. Take a look at the following list of prepositions owing to, due to, as a result of, as a consequence of. All the prepositions in this list basically mean the same as because of. However, because of is less formal than these others, so your essay will benefit from using these prepositions over because of. Let's look at an example sentence. Because of the increasing popularity of ebooks, there has been a fall in paper book sales. Now, let's paraphrase it to use more formal prepositions. Due to the increasing popularity of ebooks, there has been a fall in paper book sales. Owing to the increasing popularity of ebooks, the sales of paper books have declined substantially. As a result of the increasing popularity of ebooks, there has been a decrease in paper book sales. As a consequence of the increasing popularity of ebooks, there has been a significant decline in paper book sales. You can also put a preposition in the middle of the sentence, like the following example. There has been a drop in paper book sales because of the increasing popularity of ebooks. There has been a drop in paper book sales due to the increasing popularity of ebooks. The paper book sales have dropped substantially owing to the increasing popularity of ebooks. If you don't want to use these prepositions, you can also use the verb result, followed by the preposition from, to introduce the cause or you can simply use the verb cause. Let's look at a few examples of result from and cause. The decline in paper book sales is a result from the increasing popularity of ebooks. The decline in paper book sales is caused by the increasing popularity of ebooks. The increasing popularity of ebooks caused the decline in paper book sales. In all three examples, the cause is the increasing popularity of ebooks, while the result is the decline in paper book sales. Another word that you could use to introduce the cause of something is a rise. It's followed by the preposition from. Take a look at the following examples. Accidents arise from carelessness. These problems arise from the widening gap between the richer and the poorer parts of humanity. Mental disorders arise from the complex interplay of hereditary, biology, and environment. Okay, let's look at our final word, attribute, or attribute. A is attributed to B, means A is the result of B, and B is the cause of A. The following below demonstrate how to use attribute. I attribute my success to hard work. 
Climate change is widely attributed to the buildup of greenhouse gases. We can attribute this problem to the lack of attention to detail. So far, we've talked about how to introduce the cause using phrases like result from and arise from, prepositions like because of, owing to, due to, as a result of, and as a consequence of, and subordinating conjunctions like because and since. All right, it might be a good idea to take a five minute break and then review what you've learned, because in the next section, we're going to talk about how to express the cause and relationship by introducing the result or effect. So, the most common way to introduce the result is to use conjunctive adverbs, such as consequently, therefore, as a consequence, and as a result. Using the previous example, we can paraphrase it to the following. Ebooks are increasingly popular. Consequently, there has been a fall in paper book sales. Ebooks are increasingly popular, therefore, there has been a fall in paper book sales. Ebooks are increasingly popular, as a result, the paper book sales have declined significantly. Ebooks are increasingly popular, as a consequence, the paper book sales have declined significantly. Now, as you can see, the sentences after the conjunctive adverb is the result. The sentence before the conjunctive adverb is the cause. You can also use phrases to introduce the results or effects in the middle of sentences, as shown in the following list. Result in, lead to, contribute to, give rise to. In this list, result in, lead to, and contribute to have a similar meaning and are often used interchangeably. However, there is a subtle difference between when and how we use them. Use result in when you want to give an impression of almost instant cause and effect relationship. Use lead to when you want to indicate that there are a number of steps between the cause and its effect. Use contribute to when you want to emphasize that the cause is part of several factors. Use give rise to when the result is something that implies a change, usually an unexpected change. The change can be good or bad, it doesn't matter. Example, the change in circumstances gave rise to new possibilities. Now, let's take a look at the following sentences. The increasing popularity of ebooks resulted in a drop in the paper book sales. The increasing popularity of ebooks led to a drop in paper book sales. The increasing popularity of ebooks contributed to a drop in paper book sales. The second sentence would probably make more sense than the first sentence since the process of the drop in paper book sales is not instant. The third sentence implies that there are other factors that caused the drop in paper book sales. Now, let's look at more examples using result in, lead to, contribute to, and give rise to. Sitting in the hot sun for a long time leads to excessive sweating, resulting in dehydration. Reducing speed limits should lead to fewer deaths on the road. Advances in technology led to the Industrial Revolution. A sudden change in temperature will result in rain. The experiment resulted in the discovery of a cure for cancer. Exhaust fumes contribute to air pollution. Carbon monoxide significantly contributes to global warming. Daily shaving can give rise to a number of skin problems. Technological advances give rise to new ways of working. Well, this is the end of the lesson and we hope you've enjoyed this video. In our next video, we'll teach you how to express, compare and contrast relationships in your essay. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe and don't forget to check out our website at www.bestmytest.com.